did that, Lee and I did that uh, together. Um, we want to make sure that our Georgetown community understands how important they are. And in order to do that, I think we have to bring a game or two back to uh, this historic gym where our students, our faculty, and staff understand how important they are toward us. Again, reestablishing our identity, and then again, try to build that out. We wanted to bring something around the holiday where we'll get back to a faculty appreciation type of deal. Um, I think it has to be the Georgetown community, the Georgetown family first, and then we venture out as we get into Capital One because, again, we have to try to establish a home court advantage. Even though there's, you know, you lose optimism, and, but there's got to be some days where, you know, like, this is, this is, I really signed up for this and things are, things are hard. Who, who do you lean on and, and what do you think on those days when you're trying to maintain that optimism? Again, you know, optimism is always high. There's going to be rough days. There's going to be turbulence in the air, but at the same time, you know, I have an incredible support staff here. Hey, starting with Lee Reed, obviously Jack Dupay, I know we pray every day for him as, as he's getting healthy, but you know, Bob Groves and Joe Ferrar and Eric Smolson and that crew, and then my family, my wife, my daughter, my son, uh, our assistant coaches, our players, lean into them, um, and, and that's why we call our family, because we're all in it, you know, one dream, one team, and I said, we're going to go with that. I think so. You know, I, I think Epps is really done a great job. I think Malik Mack is really developing into a leader. Um, Michael Peavy is developing into a leader. Um, those three are standing out more with their voice and their actions. So I think we have an emerging leader in Thomas Sober and Drew Fielder. But um, everybody has an opportunity to be the leader. Sometimes they're afraid to leave because they don't want to be wrong. I was telling them, I'm not trying to be right or wrong, we're just trying to win. Uh, Coach, so I'm a senior here at school and I've only seen uh, a handful of Big East wins in my time here. Um, how does this infusion of talent that you've got in this offseason uh, help to put a better team out there once we get into the new year and into conference play? Well, hopefully we identified the right people. You know, hopefully we identified, we have 14 new players on the roster. 14. Uh, you know, uh, we took some preferred walk-ons as part of that, but um, it is our hope that we did the right thing in this recruiting world uh, to bring people here that can help us get you a couple more wins your senior year, and hopefully one day before you leave, sometime very, very soon, just walk away with a championship. That's the goal. That is a lot of new faces. I mean, yes. do you, what is the key when you've had new players in, in the past and there's only so many icebreakers you could do, you know, right. what, what is the key to bringing those guys together on and off the court? One-on-one -on -one time, a lot of team activities, a lot of open, honest, direct conversations, really trying to identify roles early, right? Yeah, I don't, you, know, you can't let them, meaning the players, always tell you what their role is because everybody feels they want to score their way into attention. Players need to play their way into attention. They need to showcase what they can do in a team setting, right? Everybody thinks scoring is going to get them attention. I told them Ben Wallace from Dennis Rodman had combined for 16 points a game and ended up in the Hall of Fame because of their intensity defensively, their rebounding prowess, right? Energy, effort, enthusiasm is a will and want to do. If you have all those things, you're going to find yourself in a situation to get on the floor. You two living in D.C. have to turn out for you personally. Have your, 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 are you getting used to it? I, I'm, I'm definitely getting acclimated. Uh, I think my wife is, is a little bit more acclimated than I am. I'm concentrated so much on re-energizing this fan base and you know trying to get to the mountaintop once again. But I know we're uh, A, B, C, D, and E R right now. I think I'm on F, right? And you know, it's 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 uh, it's not a big place. It really isn't. It's a very tight space. There's zero parking. Um, <laughs> I don't think the language is as aggressive here with the driving uh, as it was in the Northeast, right? It's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more cordial, a little bit more cordial, the people a little bit more nicer. Uh, it's a lot more expensive, I can tell you that, a lot more expensive, but it's a great learning experience for me and it's been a great transition of life. And I'm excited to continue to do it. And the people love their pandas. Have you heard about the pandas coming back? I mean, we're talking about DC, I had to throw it out. I, honestly, that came on last night and, and I, I don't watch a lot of news, and I didn't even know that was news. I'm like, oh, it's news. Anders, it sounds like, uh, what was it? Um, what 
what was it, the Ron Burgundy show or whatever? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anchorman. Anchorman. It was like Anchorman when he talked about the Panders or something. I'm like, what the hell is this? I, I want to talk about the Commanders. I want to talk about the Wizards. I want to talk about the Capitol. I want to talk about the Mystics. I want to talk about the Warriors. I'm, I'm not that brother. <laughs> you guys had a big pickup in Julius and the football team. I know yep. they had that huge poly contingent yeah. of guys on that team. It seemed like they took him in. How important was that assist from the football team laying on the big guy? Incredible, you know. I mean, they were a big assist in helping us land Julius Carpenter, and it really blew me away. You know, uh, Julian Williams was a, a big part of that, coming over and saying hello and introducing herself. And, you know, uh, Uncle Jimmy, who's uh, been a big, big help. But that whole Polynesian community was probably the reason why we got and uh, watching his development. As you can see, a lot of these first year players develop right in front of our eyes. You know, I know the school's not a statement, um, but we haven't spoken to you um, about becoming Calvo. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, when you heard that, just his impact on certainly this university that you're at now on just the basketball world. Yeah, very sad. You know, he was the ambassador of life. You know, I, mean, you know, I was fortunate to coach his son, and, you know, what he just did for people. You know, what he did for like humanity it, it, it goes way past the you know the finger you know the, the finger not it goes way past all of that and um, I hope he's remembered not just for basketball but for his spirit his smile he never knew what he was saying he had this deep 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 voice and every time he spoke he really had to concentrate he really had to concentrate he is a loss to our community but no you bring in Caleb Williams and you bring Malik Mack back home and you have some others with DC ties. How important is it to get that, you know, DMV imprint back on the team? Super important. You know, again, there were some great players in the 25 class that are going elsewhere. Um, and that was their choice. But our goal every year is to try to keep the best DMV kids in this area that can excel at Georgetown both on the floor and off the floor and continue to ignite this community. I think there's going to be several more DMV kids that are going to come to Georgetown in the very near future. And I hope you're listening so, uh, Kevin Willard, his media day, he said that about NIL, it's a broken system right now, only this gets fixed, if it all gets blown up and we start over. Mm -hmm. what, what is your take on just how everything's going right now with that? That is a loaded question. NIL, transfer portal, um, changing landscape in college sport. We have been broken before. You know, there's been a lot of different changes with the NCAA over the last 50 years. And somehow, some way, we've managed to get on top of it and stay afloat. No matter what we do, there's always going to be a challenge. There's going to be a lawsuit. I'm glad we're able to do what we're doing. I think if we don't lean into it, we'll get lost. If we don't evolve, we will dissolve. And we have to evolve with this landscape because it's not going back in. We have to do something to fix it. What is that? I've been blessed to be on the oversight committee and a couple other committees with the NCAA. And until this house case is settled, not a lot of things can be done. So there's a lot of things that are tabled right now. Um, it is a broken system. And what I think this whole portal thing has done hasn't taught people how to have resilience and resolve. Anything that's easy, they just give up. So failure is good sometimes. Failure brings about uh, an internal drive. And I don't think our kids know how to fail today. They really don't know how to struggle. You know, we the parents have bailed them out of everything. If something gets hard, we the parents say, okay, baby, I got you, I got you. Our era, I guess I'm a boomer, I guess. Sometimes you just gotta figure this shit out. You just gotta figure it out. And you, there's, there's no dictionary or no thesaurus or life book on figuring it out. You gotta go through life. Fail, get back up, scratch, scratch your knees. You know, your shoulder hurts. You know, you don't have bomb for it all the time. Like ben Gay to help the pain. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up and move on. And I don't know if the system that we're creating right now, and maybe I have to evolve or I'll dissolve with that, but that's just my overall gut feeling on it, my professional feeling on it, we'll get through. But many of us didn't get here by saying help. Or, you know, you do it for me, right? We all had to get here figuring it out, start at the bottom, work our way through. Everybody now wants to, they wanna go from, being an ex-player to the NBA coach of the Celtics or, or the Wizards. You gotta get, you know, you learn how to sweep the floor with it. Go get some water, pass out some towels, right? Be a GA. Grind through it. Grind through it. The system's not allowing me to grind. Don't do what he made to your program, what he did to the thing. 
Dante is an emerging superstar in this business. Dante was my first ever recruit at Providence College, and the one thing I always told him is I said, I'm going to take care of you the rest of your life. And uh, everybody's going to see him running his own organization in the very near future. He's, uh, he's a superstar in the business. I have a good player. Really good player. I appreciate you guys for coming. Look forward to you guys checking us out through the year. Thanks, Thanks coach. Thanks, coach.